Okay guys, a little bit of a garden update. These are the uh, first of the peas to come off the plants. I don't know how many more of them I'll get as uh, the plants got so tall that they folded over in half. So next year I'll have to build about a six or seven foot trellis and let them climb on that. Well everyone, we'll get on with the video in a minute, but first I gotta feed Mother Nature's little pests and and uh, critters that run around here, so stay tuned. Yeah, some more nuisance visitors. I'd snap a line, but I don't trust uh, these walls being straight. They might have some wiggles in them. So what I'm going to do is just uh, take 10 inches off the studs from the top down. I'll use my big uh, skill saw. Cut the 2x4 right off at that line, all the way down. Peel it off the thing and peel the bottom plate off. I might be able to reuse this bottom plate but the rest of them are pretty pretty shot so we'll see what I can get away with using and what I can't reuse and go from there. Okay, so I cut the studs off. Now what I'm going to do take the saws all and trim the nails off the bottom plate, and then we're going to reassemble this wall, move it, try to stand it on the platform. fire pit material. I said it in the past, but this is a uh, old storage building that was up at the house. I tore it down. I'm going to try to reuse. Okay, so I got this bottom plate done on this first wall. This is the back wall. But I do have to remove the uh, gable because that is going to change a bit when we uh, run the new roof line out. So anyhow, I'm going to try to get this wall moved by myself here. So I can start working on that second wall and then uh, I think Jerome might stop by later to give me a hand maneuvering the other walls around. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay there's the back wall panel. That was the inside obviously. This is the outside. I'm going to leave the sheeting and everything on just as is. And we'll attach it to the base 
So this lap's done. And we'll nail everything off as best we can because I want to cover this in the uh, same material as I covered the uh, cabin in. Anyhow, that's the plan. And while I attack the other four walls to this, I am going to let you guys sit back and watch a few clips from the last uh, little garage we just put up. So until I get back here, I will talk to everybody later. Okay, everyone. I want to take a moment and ask for only respectful comments as Willow is a transgender and also that I do a lot of sub work with her. So again, please keep all comments respectful. With that being said, this garage was started the day before. We unloaded the truck and stood the wall panels, top plated, and set windows in the service door. I next cut the parts for the top half of the roof, including fly rafters, cheating, rat runs or lateral bracing, and subfascia. The overhead door wrap is usually done the first day, but we left early due to extreme temps and humidity. I'm a Minnesotan and not used to 95 plus degrees. After most of the groundwork is done, we straighten the walls to set the trusses. Put it right at the seam, if you can, or right next to the window. The top plate seam. Oh yes, then the setting of the trusses. Such an awesome time. These happen to be 28 foot 412 common trusses. No room in attics or anything, just a nice simple build. I think the uh, garage was uh, 28 wide and 24 deep.
Well, Will O'Neill's off the rat runs, I start hanging the gable T111 that I cut earlier that morning. The metal strip that's going in there is Z-flashing. It's just to keep the water from going in between the seams. After the USB was stacked and the chalk line snapped for the decking, it's time to sheet the roof. After each row of USB, I put H clips between each truss to help support it on 24 inch centers and to space the sheeting. After the roof is sheeted, we hang the fly rafters and the subfascia. This company uses 1x6 for subfascia. A lot of other places will use 2x6. But either case, it will get covered by aluminum soffit and fascia. So. After the subfascia is on, I go ahead and put the D-edge on, or drip edge, as Willow gets ready to start papering and ice and watering the roof. It was a bit warm that day, so the uh, ice and water wasn't quite cooperating very nicely. So as Willow finishes papering the roof, I go ahead and put all the brick mold around the windows and the uh, overhead door. After the brick mold is on, I go back with a skill saw and cut a raglet above it. And then I place a piece of flashing in and then caulk it. It's about the only way we can really uh, comply with the flashing code on these T111 buildings. And the roof is loaded, leaving us with just soffit, shingling, and the overhead.
on the third morning we got here nice and early so we decided we'd shingle first usually I try to save it for the very last thing on a job but uh, it was supposed to get kind of smoking hot again so we decided to get the roof knocked out early and finish everything else later So after the uh, roof is on, we split up once again. Willow starts working on the soffit and the fascia, and I start putting in the overhead. These are the soffit panels you got to cut up and place. They come in 12 foot panels along with 12 foot strips of uh, pre bent fascia. And there you go, a three day build where all the homeowner has to do is wire and paint and they have a complete garage. Hope you guys enjoyed this portion of the video. And now let's get back to the cabin. Wall two. And there's three walls up. Hopefully uh, next video we'll get some rafters on. And get the roof sheeted. Anyhow, until then, see everybody later. <laughs>